Hello everyone. It's Lori Staley, Addicted Stamper with Stampin' Up! And it is Sunday night at eight. So it is time for Come Stamp Along with me. If you're on, give me a shout, say hi, hello, a like or a love. I'm gonna go over and share this over on my other page while you're hopping on. Oh, it's going to get quicker tonight. Here we go. Okay. Hi, Emmy. Hi, Jerry. Hey, Trish. It is cold. Hi, Carol, Betty, Marlene. Good to see you all. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Is everybody staying warm? Because it is a cold night. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Marlene. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you. 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 Okay. You guys are awesome. How was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? We had a busy weekend. And then we didn't. <laughs> and we didn't. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. So I think we're all set up. And uh, hi, Sheila. Welcome, welcome. Good to see everyone. So I have the cards here that we did on Thursday for coffee and cards. This was done with the in the moment stamp set. Oh, good, Carol. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Donna. Good, 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 good. Well, I'm glad you guys had a good weekend and you got some card making done. I did not. I truthfully, until about three hours ago, hadn't made a card since Wednesday, which is very unusual for me. <laughs> Well, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. 46 degrees. That's a little cooler than you're used to, isn't it, Emmy? Down there in Kissimmee. Um, so yeah, so these are the cards that we made on Thursday in Coffee and Cards using the In the Moment stamp set. We used a couple of different coloring mechanisms, or mechanisms, coloring tools. Uh, we used the watercolor pencils. We used the blends. We used blending brushes for our background here and then blends for the rest of her. And then we paper pierced her skirts or paper pieced her skirt. Oh good, it's gonna be one of those nights, I can't speak. Um, so anyway, the winner of these is Jen. And Jen, I don't know if I saw you hop on, um, but if you do hop on, you are the winner, congratulations. It was Jen Wiseman. And I'm not sure if I have your address or not. If I don't, either send it to me or I'll try to get it from a mutual friend. Oh, you've been scrapbooking. Very good, very good. Okay, hi, Ashley. Um, and then if you remember, we did a snow patrol on Thursday because we had snow here where I live. And so we had these beautiful 2022-2022 in color uh, gems that I was gonna draw for, or enamel dots, I should say. And the winner of these is Marlene. So Marlene, I have those for you as well. Congratulations. And thank you guys for watching and sharing the video and supporting me. All right, and then real quick, just another reminder. Um, here are the Just Card kits for the month. Okay, you earn these with a minimum $30 purchase, product purchase, either through me with a credit card or you can go directly online and order at addictedstamper.stampinup.net using January's host code. That's critical because if you don't use that, then I don't know, um, I don't know that you've placed the order so you don't get counted in the total for the kits. Hi, Shirley. Welcome, welcome. All right. So, yep. And we have until the end of January. You can also purchase the kits. They are um, $12. And uh, you can purchase those as well. I just need to know by the end of the month if you're interested in purchasing a kit rather than placing the order. All right. So tonight I want to share with you a technique in using your designer series paper. Because I don't know about you guys, but yeah, I have a lot of designer series paper and I go through a lot of designer series paper, but sometimes it's so pretty, I don't want to cut it. So we have to learn to chop it and love it, not just love it. Um, and this was a, a technique that they taught us either in backstage or on stage, which one is leadership and one is open to all, all demonstrators to attend. 
um, and it's a lot of fun. We've done them virtually due to COVID for the last couple of years. Um, and while I miss seeing everyone and chatting and catching up, I, I like the virtual too, because it reduces the cost um, of attendance and I get some of my team members together and we watch it together. So, so it's fun. So anyway, this was taught at one of those. The technique itself is called, um, well, it's, I've heard it called two things. I've heard it called stack and shuffle, or I've heard it called cut and shuffle. Has anybody heard of that technique? And what you do is you take your designer series paper, and if you saw in the comments before, okay, Valerie, hey, happy birthday, by the way. I hope, I hope it's a good day, hope you had a good day. Um, so what you do is you take a four by five and a quarter designer piece of paper and you have four patterns that you marry together. And it can be out of the same pack as this is, or it can be out of individual packages, right? You might pull two from one, one from another, and one from a third. And then you end up with cards like this, all using basically the same supplies. This is a great technique if you need a lot of something, like you need a lot of thank you cards, you need a lot of birthday cards, um, thinking of you cards, whatever, because you're basically making four cards at one time. How cool is that? So this one I did with the, huh? yep, the name. I looked at it right before I went live and then the name just flew right out of my head. It is, let's find it in the mini catalog because it's in the mini catalog and it's called Artfully Composed. And you will see that in the larger pattern here. So it is part of a suite. This is the entire suite. And you can see some cards on there made with that paper. Um, I actually, I bought the paper for the paper share and I had some left over. So I played with it um, to create these cards. So we're going to do it tonight, but we're going to do it um, with a different pattern, with different papers. Hi, Karen. And we're gonna get some input from you all on what we're gonna do, okay? All right, so I am using the beautiful abstract beauty paper, right? And this is the paper that is new size to us. This is the four by six. So yay, it was already cut, right? And we have the ombre in the, well, I think that's mint macaron, but I'm gonna bet you anything. They're gonna tell me that it is just jade. So that's the just jade, magenta madness. And then we have the little speckled pattern and the little flowers here. And then blushing bride polka dots and gold foil, because this is specialty paper. So it has gold accents or gold patterns on it depending upon what piece you're using. Some more magenta madness mixed with some blushing bride. And then that's a pretty one. That has bumblebee and just jade and blushing bride and magenta madness and gold. Some black and white polka dots. Who doesn't love black and white polka dots? And some gold stripes. Some balmy blue checks. And then another one of those splatter patterns with magenta madness and balmy blue, the gold and where the blue and the Magenta Madness overlap, you're even getting some purples in there. Some more Bumblebee. And then that's a pretty pattern as well. And that has, oh my goodness, what all does that have in it? That has Blushing Bride, Magenta Madness, Bumblebee, Just Jade, Misty Moonlight, and Night of Navy. And maybe even some Pumpkin Pie, I'm not sure. Here's some black and white diagonal stripe. And then another one of the splash patterns. Wide bold stripes, some misty moonlight night of navy with some gold splatter, black and white splatter, and then the pretty little flowers in the black and gold and white. Just Jade, this, um, I don't know what this reminds me of, but there's something I've seen. Hi, Jen. Hey, Jen, you won the cards that we did on Thursday when I drew. So if you can private message me your address, just in case I don't have it, I would appreciate it. And I'll get those off to you. Um, but anyway, this is just Jade and then some Blushing Bride and just Jade with some gold accents. I just love this paper. I just think this is one of our prettiest papers. 
Um, there's a big bold floral pattern with all of our Knight of Navies and pinks and just jades, and then a really soft um, pattern. Okay. All right, so we are gonna play with this tonight in the cut and shuffle or stack and shuffle. I've heard it called both. And I'm gonna let you pick. So I picked out four sheets, but I picked two different sets. So the one set we would be using these to create with. So that's A, we'll call that set A. Wait a minute, I lost a pattern or I lost a piece. Then this one is B. So do we want to play with A or B? Great, thank you, Jen. Put your comment in the comment section and we'll give you a couple beats there to do that and then we'll go with the majority. Gonna pull some other goodies out of my box. Okay, I see a lot of Bs. I only see two A's, three A's, four A's. Uh oh, A's taking over. <laughs> okay, I need one more vote. You vote A. Okay, I'm gonna cut it off. A took over. I think we have one, two, three, four. Let's see, make sure I'm not wrong here. Five, six. Yep. We have five to six, so we're going to go with A, okay? Lay those aside. Maybe I'll make them up and just post them at some point so you can see what that looks like. Won't be tonight. <laughs> that I can tell you. All right, so I am going to actually, let's see, how do I want to do this? I think we're going to go this way just because I like to separate the two blacks. Not that it's going to matter when you see what we're going to do. And we are going to cut this. You all know I use my paper cutter upside down, right? So the first thing you're going to do, and I didn't put the cutting measurements into or where to cut it in the uh, post today because I wanted to do it with you. Uh, is anybody stamping with me? And if not, you'll be able to go back and watch the video then. I don't think any of these, so you see these, none of these are directional. If you had a directional pattern, um, they'll be okay. You'll be able to, to make it work regardless, but none of these are. So we're gonna cut this first cut at two and three quarters. So I've got it lined up at two and three quarters. Now, if you have the Stampin' Up paper cutter, this will work. You just wanna put a little extra pressure. That's the score line, that's not gonna do it. Um, so you want the dark blade, but that will cut, okay? Um, if you have another cutter, I don't know if you'll be able to go through all four layers at one time. Just make sure you keep the patterns in the same orientation, okay? So then we're gonna take the larger stack Again, I'm gonna get those lined up nice and tight, okay? And we are gonna line this up and we're gonna cut it at three inches. Shoot, you know what I didn't do? Well, we're gonna do that now. I didn't cut this down to five and a quarter, did I? No, I sure didn't. Let's do that right now. I'm like, why does that look like it's in the middle? <laughs> so yes, it's already cut at the five, or the four inches for us, but it was not cut to the five and quarter inch. So now we're gonna cut that off there too. Make sure they're nice and tight. Okay, now we should be good. Of course, I'm not throwing them away because you know, I just might want them again sometime. All right, so we're gonna cut this, as I said, we're gonna turn it horizontal and we're gonna line it up at the three inch. And now I do not have it in the center. That makes much more sense. Hey, Cindy. All right, so here we go. We're cutting that. Now we're gonna lay these aside. Again, I'm keeping that orientation exactly the same, right? So I haven't shifted anything around. There we go. We're gonna bring in our skinny strips 
get them nice and tight. Okay, so they're nice and even. Put them in our cutter, again, on a horizontal position. And we're gonna cut this one at two inches. And there are our four piles, right? And you wanna keep them in order. Now I'm gonna do this with them now that the paper cutter's out of the way. And because this is a non-directional pattern, I don't have to worry if they're straight up and down or whatever. So the first pack, which is your largest, we are just gonna shuffle one piece to the bottom and lay it back down. Second stack, we're gonna shuffle two pieces to the back and lay it down. And notice I went one, two, not don't just like go, okay, two pieces, got it, right? No, don't do that, do them separately, one, two. Can you guess? We're gonna do three patterns. One, two, three. And then this one, we're just gonna leave standalone, okay? Now, do I have the pattern showing that I want? Yes, I do. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring in a Blushing Bride card base. I did? Yes, I did, thank you. See, I would have been looking for that. That's all right, that's on the bottom. We're all good. Okay, so I have a Blushing Bride piece of cardstock here. We're gonna fold that in half, crease that nice with the bone folder. And then you can choose to use Tombow liquid glue for this. If you like um, having the option to slide it around or you can use your seal. I tend to use my seal more than the Tombow, but I'm gonna try it with the Tombow for you so you can see. Um, so we're going to I'm trying to decide, do I like that pattern? No, I think we're gonna go with the speckles. I think we're gonna go with the speckles, although we may be going with the seal because my glue doesn't wanna come out. Okay, so we're gonna put this right here. I'm not gonna press it the whole way down. I'm gonna pick this piece up. I might be going to my seal. We're gonna put this piece down. Okay, pick this piece up. And you can see I used the uh, opposite sides of the pattern, right? Which is kind of nice too. This one's gonna go down here at the bottom. I'm gonna line it up at the edge, the bottom edge. And then this one is gonna of course go right here. And then we'll just make sure everything is nice and pressed down. And that's all there is to it. And we're just gonna keep doing that, going down our patterns. Here's our spoon folder. Now this piece is gonna go here. So you always do the same rotation after you've shuffled your stacks. And if you wanted to, you could trim down your designer series paper to five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And you could put a layer, you know, another layer of cardstock in there that might be an accent color. Um, you know, if you wanted to add additional depth to it, you could absolutely do that. Just remember to cut your initial DSP down an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, depending upon how much of that extra layer you want showing. So it is fun to take, it's kind of addictive, I have to tell you. It's fun to take your DSPs. And again, I did use all out of the same pack for simplicity's sake tonight, but you could absolutely mix and marry your packs of designer series paper. 
Okay, we want that to come the whole way down here and be aligned with the bottom edge of the piece right beside it. I'm gonna grab this one. Um, but yes, you can definitely mix and match. You could even use the, um, if you needed some less, you know, less bold patterns, you could mix in the accent color from our six by six color packs, right? Our bolds and our subtles and our neutrals, et cetera. So there's number two. These are all the bases, right? That we're doing. Oh, I'm glad you guys like it. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool. I just had to work it into my rotation and it worked for tonight. <laughs> all right, so two more. And then we get to um, add our greetings and our embellishments. And because it has the beautiful designer series paper on it, you don't really have to go crazy with your embellishments, right? I'm being brave because I'm patting these down as I go. But since this is like my fourth time doing this, I'm feeling uh, not so far. <laughs> I didn't want to run out tonight, Emmy. <laughs> oh, shoot. While I am thinking of it, guys, um, you know, I started doing my YouTube lives, my Make It Monday YouTube lives at three o'clock on Mondays. I have an appointment tomorrow, so I won't be on till tomorrow night. Um, so hopefully you can join me tomorrow night at eight is when I will be on YouTube. And I have a really fun project to share with you. Just make sure they're straight, right? Because they're patterned, you'd really notice if they were on there crooked. And then one more. So again, if you are trying to make a whole bunch of cards at one time, uh, or you need a whole bunch of cards at one time, this is a great method to use. Um, you know, I've done sets of thank you cards for brides. This is a great method to use to do something like that. Uh, just anything where you need quite a few. Always check in to make sure my edges are even. And I thought about using black as our card base for this, but I wanted it to be a little bit softer. So that's why I went with the Blushing Bride. But you could absolutely use black under here. Uh, it is kind of like a one sheet wonder, absolutely. And uh, you could even put a layer of gold foil under this if you wanted to, because the accent on this piece has the gold in it. Okay, so there's our four cards. You can see the patterns are totally different, right? And we're gonna continue on that simple, easy pattern. Um, and I pulled out greetings. I've got a happy birthday greeting, a thank you greeting, a thinking of you greeting, a uh, and a sympathy greeting, I think. So we've got our greetings here. And I've got scrap basic white so that we can use our punches. And I am using a circle punch just because I'm on here. Oh, it'll work with any DSP, Ashley. Any DSP that you have, it will work with. The trick is cutting it to the four by five and a quarter and keeping your stack together exactly as you want it the whole way through until you do the shuffle, right? So as you're cutting it, make sure that your stack stays together. Um, if they get out of order, you're not, you're gonna maybe end up with two of this on one card, or at least it'll look like you're supposed to have two of that on one card. Um, so that's, that's the key. But yes, you can absolutely use any DSP cut to the four by five and a quarter. And again, 
You can make it larger if you don't want that much border around, make it four and an eight by five and three eighths, or you can make it smaller if you want another layer behind the designer series paper on the card front, just cut it down to three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, right? So we're just gonna stamp and punch. And I am using a circle punch um, because it is quicker rather than digging out the layering circles. And I know a lot of you have these even though they're retired. And I truly believe they will be back in our catalog at some point. So we did a thank you, you're so thoughtful. Thank you. That one comes from Flowering Tulips, which is new in the mini catalog. I love that little circle greeting. I think that's so cute. And then I have Heartfelt Love and Caring Thoughts Are With You. Now, why did I put the lid on? <laughs> yeah, this is great. This is a great way to use it. If you are putting your cards in a shop, right? I'm going to show you something at the end that you can do. We're going to use, oh, I might have made that too low. I think we can make it work. I think we can make it work. Because by picking the individual greetings like I have, you can make a very nice set of cards to give as a gift too, right? that um oh the heartfelt thanks or the heartfelt love and caring came from quiet meadow and the birthday greeting keeping your hoping your birthday is filled with all the best things comes from the sunny sentiments so you can pull all your fun greetings out and play with them for this and this one i'm going to use the label me lovely label It doesn't really matter which orient or which paper design you put these on, right? One more. So very happy for you is perfect for a congratulations card. Don't forget to share the video, guys, to be entered into the drawing for these cards that I'm making tonight. And then we use the uh, rectangle, right? The, like the postage stamp rectangle for that one. And that one came out of color and contour. All right, so let me close this up for just a second. Otherwise my hands will go into the ink pad and it won't be pretty. And we are gonna use up all kinds of edges because I keep forgetting to put a Hi, Nancy. How are you? you? Yeah, I was thinking of you, Cheryl, with this one. <laughs> Hi, Bren. Good to see you guys. Um, yeah, I was thinking of you, Cheryl. Cheryl's a very dear friend who loves designer series paper, but doesn't like to cut it. <laughs> right? So this is a great way to cut it. And it's really fun to play, as I said earlier. It's so fun to play with all the different patterns and designs that you might have. Oh my, just about took my finger off on that one. I always give a caveat at my in-person events to be careful with the paper snips because they are sharp. <laughs> Apparently I forgot to tell myself that today. All right, here we go. Just using up the borders of the dimensionals. I still have plenty left. Always a good thing, right? So we are going to, now the trick with this is you're gonna put them right there. So not in the center, which is always our instinct, right? It's always our instinct, hey Dawn, to, um, to go in the center. But what we're doing is we're covering up the intersections, if you will, right? 
And again, I'm going to try to be straight here. And I'm not putting a border around this, you know, a mat, if you will, because of all, again, all that designer series paper behind it. I don't really need a mat to cover it. Yes, and I, I went with punches for ease tonight, but you can absolutely mix in your dyes as well. They're fun too. We have some really great label dyes, right? And don't forget, because I remember saying this towards the end of the holiday book because I hadn't really played with it very much, but if you have painted Christmas, there are some amazing label dyes in that set. Um, they have nothing to do with Christmas that you can use all year round. So be sure. That's actually a um, product that's carrying over. So even if you don't have it, you can grab it to pull this out, play with them. All right. And I think you goes right here. Okay, I'm gonna lay these aside so we can do the insides. And I'm done with the punches. So let me move them off to the side. And I am using special moments. Yeah, I like that punch too a lot. Um, I'm using special moments. This is the celebration $100 qualifying purchase and you get it for free. It has 21 greetings in it, pretty much every occasion you can think of. And so when I was doing the all occasion cards, if you will, I thought, well, this is gonna be the perfect, perfect set for me to use to put the insides in. Now y'all know with my thank yous, I leave them blank. So not to disappoint Emmy, here comes the seal. <laughs> we'll see if we make it through, right? Um, so I do leave my insides blank on my thank you card so I can customize it to the occasion. So here we go. We're gonna get that on there. And that one can lay aside. And then we're going to use uh, the With Sympathy stamp. Again, in that special moments. And remember, when you spend $150 before shipping and tax with me during celebration, meaning January and February, of course, um, you will be invited to my exclusive celebration after party. And celebration doesn't quite end for you at the end of February because you will get a chance to earn my um, stash of extras. So that's always fun. We do some fun projects in that as well. Okay, so now we have birthday. So we're gonna use the happy birthday. I love the script on this greeting. Oh, didn't like that. I didn't like that. Let's see if we do better this time. Yes, we did. Okay. And then the so very happy for you. Like I said, that to me says congratulations. So we are going to use the big congratulations stamp out of special moments. It's really kind of nice to have one stamp set that you can get all your greetings out of. At least, and it's a great starter set, right? Because again, you can get a lot of different greetings out of it. Now I did use what, three or four different ones for my uh, greetings on the front. But for the insides, we were able to use just special moments. Okay, so now all we have left to do is put our bling on. Bling our bling. Okay, so what did I do? That'll teach me to make a bow ahead of time. I have no idea where it went. All right, well, we're gonna watch me make some bows. Okay, so we are going to use some bling and I'm gonna be consistent because again, this, if you travel 
If you go camping and you want to take a project with you, this is a great project. Grab yourself, cut it down in advance. So you just have your, you know, your four by five and a quarter sheets. Um, grab some different bling, right? Your basic white or your very vanilla, whichever one works with your one stamp set for your inside greetings. Maybe punch your shapes out so you don't have to carry your punches with you in advance. And you can sit and create cards with very little work. Be a great kit class too, huh? Hmm, make me think about that. All right, so we're gonna do some embellishing, as I said. And you guys get to pick which embellishments you think I should use. Should I go with black? Because we have these new classic matte dots. They come in the black, the basic gray, uh, very vanilla and basic white. And we could put some black accents on here. We could pull in the brushed metallic adhesive dots in the gold. We could use that. We have the mini pearls, which maybe we could use a combination of the gold minis and the gold matte dots. We're gonna put those together. We have the pastel pearls with some pinks, right? So we could use the pastel pearls. We also have the polished dots. And I think we talked about these before. I think these look pink, so we could use those. Have I lost you yet? I'm giving you too many options, aren't I? <laughs> and then we have the elegant faceted dots with the two different size pink, pink gems in there. So what do we think? Let's say pearls, black or gems, and then we'll funnel it down from there. While you do that, I'm gonna make a bow. You like the blacks? You like the plastel pearls? I like black too. You'd mix it up. All right, it looks like black's the winner, huh? So I did actually make a little bow beforehand because I'm gonna put the little bow on the neck, uh, neck, yeah. Ugh. The neck of this little punch out. That's if I can get my tails to lay down the way they should. And you can absolutely, somebody said, why not mix it up? You can absolutely mix it up. Uh, again, I'm trying to do simple here, uh, but you could absolutely put different embellishments on each card if you wanted to. Um, you could actually put your, your embellishments on for your occasion, right? If this was a bridal thank you. Yeah, I think the pearls would be perfect. Um, Okay, we're gonna make another bow because those tails are going in two different directions. So I am using the Simply Elegant trim here. Maybe we're gonna make another bow. This is why I did it before I got on camera. <laughs> Best laid plans, right? But this really is a fun way, as I said earlier, to use your DSP to create cards, a lot of cards in a short amount of time. And this, I think I said this, this was shown to us by the back or by the home office. So one of the benefits of you know being a demonstrator is that we have special events just for demonstrators where we get to learn new techniques see new products. We even have game nights throughout the year. It's a lot of fun. So remember, you too can be on my team <laughs> and enjoy not only the discount, but uh, some of those extra little goodies that come as being part of a demonstrator base. All right, so this is gonna go on here with glue dot. Thank you guys. Hang with me till the end, because I'll show you what I did with that one set then. And it's actually done with another set of papers too, so you get to see a third one. So I'm just kind of rolling the glue dot up a little because that little gold trim is not so wide. Put our knot down right on that. Okay, and that ties our gold in very nicely. We're gonna grab the black mat or not. These are, these are the 
classic matte dots. So they're a little bit different than the black matte dots. And we'll try it. We'll try it on one and then we'll see, do we wanna to go to pearls? We can switch it up. I have them all here. What do you think of that one? I kind of like that. This one, truthfully, I haven't put any bling on this one yet um, in any of the designs I've done. And then maybe this one, since we have the gold right here, we should go to the gold or the pink. We could do a pink. It doesn't take long. It does not take long at all. That's, that's one of the joys of this particular technique, right? So I know I don't normally teach you techniques on Sunday night. I normally do those on Thursdays, but I thought you might like this one. And somebody said, it's like a one sheet wonder. And it really is. It really kind of is like a one sheet wonder. All right, let's do some gold on this guy. Let's grab the gold dots here. And we're gonna do one big one down here. And then we're gonna do one big one up here and a little one beside it. What do you think? Because that massive pink was bugging me. <laughs> it was just too much open pink there. We needed to juice it up a little bit, huh? Hi, Thelma. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. All right. So we have the black, we have gold, we have the gold bow. Um, how about we do this? What do you think about this? Now we're just playing, guys. As soon as I can get my remaining glue dot off of my take your pick tool, huh? Oh, I think I left the thing behind. I did. There we go. How about we just put a pink one right there? We like that. Hi, Zaina. 1.45 in the morning. Oh my goodness, bless your heart and you're up. I hope to be sound asleep at 1.45 my time. <laughs> I kind of like that on there. I, that brought that one up a little bit. What can we do with this guy? Let's go to the baby pearls. What do you think? Hmm. And we're using the gold. There's no eyes on here anywhere. Oh, but you know what? How about on the end, ends of the script? And then we'll do just since that's only two, and you know my thing about two, and we still have our, uh, what do they call those things? Triangles. We still have our triangles. Thank you, Thelma. All right. So. Let me get all this out of the way so it's not distracting you. So there we go. So here are the ones we made together. Okay. And yes, we did those very quickly. Um, probably the thing that's going to take you the longest is picking out your patterns of designer series paper. Because <laughs> there's so many options to choose from, right? I love it. So this is the one I showed you when we got started. Okay. Again, I used all the same greetings. So I didn't change up my greetings because to me, this is such a nice pack of cards, right? You've got birthday, congratulations, sympathy, and thank you. You've got all the images covered. And then, and I actually was going to decorate this and I just liked the way it looked, but you could absolutely put a belly band around this. How about this packaging? So these are our acetate boxes. I think they're on 137 or 139 in the annual catalog. Um, but again, same greetings, four cards, four envelopes. Doesn't that make a nice little package, a gift? Um, you could do, as I said, thank you cards at a bridal shower. I've given brides thank you cards at their bridal shower along with the, you know, their other gift, you know, the gift that I went out and purchased for them um, because they always need thank you cards. And of course I tie it into their colors and things like that. Um, but yeah, they all fit in there very nicely. And then they have a nice package of cards. So they're ready, right? Also, if you do vendor shows, craft shows, things like that, this is a great way to package cards and just slide something on the inside that on the back that tells them the 
card types that are in there and maybe even type the greetings out that you used on the inside so they know exactly what they're getting. Because you don't want them opening them up and closing them and they get fingerprints all over them and things like that, right? Hey, Marsha. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Cut and shuffle or stack and shuffle. I've seen it called both, as I said, um, but it really is a lot of fun. And I will try at some point to do this grouping that we were gonna try too and uh, put them out on my page so you can see what they came out looking like. But it, like I said, it won't be tonight. <laughs> it won't be tonight. Your measurements again, if you wanna write it down, you take that four by five and a quarter oriented portrait, cut it at two and three quarters. Then you turn your larger stack, right? The stack, the two and three quarter stack, turn it horizontal and cut it at three. Your skinny stack that you had left over, you turn it horizontal and you cut it at two, okay? Very easy, easy measurements, easy numbers to remember. Um, lots and lots of fun to play with. If you do this, guys, do me a favor, put it up in the group, uh, Stamp with Lori group, because I would love to see what your designs are. I think it's so fun to share that kind of stuff. All right, and then remember, like, comment, love, share the video even if you're watching after the fact, because I draw before we go live the next time, uh, which will be Thursday for Facebook at 10 for coffee and cards. And you will be entered to win um, the set of cards that we made tonight. And then I will be on YouTube live tomorrow evening at eight, uh, not three as I originally intended because I have an appointment tomorrow, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so at eight o'clock tomorrow night, come catch me on YouTube and chat with me there. And I'll be giving away the project I made over there tomorrow night as well. So, okay. All right. Thanks guys so much. Stay safe, stay warm. And uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow night. And if not, I'll see you Thursday morning for coffee and cards. Have a good one. Bye.